So before I start, how many of you read ingredient label before you buy any food item? For example, honey bunches, that's one of my favorite and also kids. So how many of you read the labels before you buy? To be honest, like a lot of consumers, especially with the smartphone, they are more cautious about what you guys are eating. And that's one of the goal of today's lecture. Basically, that broader umbrella is called as food additives. So food additive, basically, these are grass substance. Grass means, how many of you heard about FDA? With the thanks to COVID, everyone knows about CDC, FDA. So FDA, one of the role is just making sure the food we eat is safe. So they give approval for variety of food items where you can add in the food. These are called food additives. So these are called grass. So grass, not the grass we eat. These are generally recognized as safe. So the food companies, technically, they can add only grass approved ingredients. So all the stuff you see in the food label, these are grass approved. Uh, there are thousands of grass, so we are not able to talk about all. Uh, I made some classifications that way you can relate. So these are the major classifications. So we're gonna go one by one. So the first one, preservative. Can you give me one example of preservative? Salt. Salt. Perfect. So salt is one of the most common preservatives. So, so the preservative itself you can classify like something that limit microbial growth. For example, how many of you heard about food poisoning? I'm pretty sure everyone or some of you. So the, one of the goal adding one of these preservatives limit microbial spoilage. And the second one, chemical, for example, we'll talk in a minute what is a chemical. And the third one, enzymatic. So the first one, salt. So that's one of the, if you look anecdotally, years back, people realized when you add salt, you can keep food for a longer time. So how this salt act as a preservative, that's one, not much people knows it. Basically, salt can bind with water. So for example, if you work out, you drink water. Why? You need water for survival. Likewise, bacteria need water. But if you're adding something that will prevent water for the bacteria, then it will not grow. So basically how the salt can act as a preservative, it binds with water. So this term is called water activity. So that's how it binds with water. So there are different type of food has different water activity. So basically it's a function of water content. For example, if you eat watermelon, it has a ton of water. Can you give me an example for a very dry food? Crackers, it's a dry food. How many of you have seen coffee powder? It's very, very dry. So depending upon the water content, the water activity changes. And the second group of example that acts a preservative or limiting uh, chemical changes is sulfur dioxide. For example, wine. I know you guys never drink wine, uh, but wine, that red color, you know, to maintain that red color, the industry add sulfur dioxide. It's a liquid, so during wine making, they add this liquid. As a result, it can retain that color, so it added as a preservative. Second one, nitride. I know some of you like hot dog, brisket. How you get that unique flavor? They add sodium nitride. So nitride, it's a another preservative added in food to improve flavor. Benzoate, for example, how many of you seen like, what happened when you keep, let's say you buy strawberry, okay? You keep it for five days, six days, what happened? Mold. mold, thank you. So the mold growth, it's a problematic in food that has low acidic or very sour. So that's why when you buy some of the drinks, they add this ingredient like benzoate and sorbate primarily to limit that mold growth. How many of you heard about rancidity? Anyone heard about rancid oil or rancid cheese? I know some of you heard about. So rancidity, it's a function of lipid. So lipid, I'm sure you heard about fat. So when you keep fat for a long time, especially some type of fat, it will go bad. So that's basically called rancidity. So the industry adds a um, uh, lot of antioxidants. For example, how many of you eat fruits and vegetables on a regular basis? Anyone eat fruits and vegetables? If I ask you why you eat fruits and vegetables, someone told it's good. 
what is that good? It's basically, it's rich in antioxidants. Make sense? So the industry make, so you can get natural antioxidant also, uh, you can make synthetic one. Other one is uh, preventing enzymatic changes. For example, how many of you seen, like when you cut an apple or a potato, what happened? It turns brown, thank you. So the browning, it's due to enzymatic browning. So enzyme means these are protein that has some function when the animal was live or the fruit was when it's growing. So when it turns brown, people don't really like it. Make sense? But when you buy a Happy Meal from McDonald's or Subway, Apple is still smiling at you. Do you have any idea why that Apple is still because they understand they add something to limit that enzymatic browning. So that's the first major classification acting as a preservative. Now the second one is functional properties. There are, this one I'm pretty sure you are very, very, very much familiar. I'm gonna go one by one. So the first one is flavor enhancer. So how many, so when you, uh, when you have cold or runny nose, can you appreciate all the flavors? Probably not, why? Normally I do a peppermint test. For example, if you're eating peppermint candy, okay? So unwrap it, eat it, plug your nose, okay? Eat it, you will not have that peppermint flavor. Where when you unplug, suddenly you can really appreciate. So flavor is a combination of taste that's happening in your mouth, plus aroma that's happening in the nose. So it's a combination. So MSG, it's called monosodium glutamate. What it does is it increases sensitivities. For example, we have taste buds. So this compound will increase sensitivity. So that's why food tastes really, really good. Second one, emulsion. For example, so you have oil. What happens you add some oil in water? What happens? It separates. So water and oil never mix together. What about your favorite mayo? It has a ton of oil. Why it is not separating? So they add an ingredient to, so for example, if you have two different faces, so they add some ingredient to clump it together. So those are called emulsifiers. So for example, emulsion is a mixture. If you are adding some emulsifier, for example, one of the classical one is getting from soy. So these are called soy lecithin, okay? So if you have some fat and water, so it's not only in food, a lot in pharmace pharmaceutical, even cosmetics. Anything that has fat and water, you add an emulsifier, you can make a uniform mixture. Other one is viscosity. Classical example, how many of you made chocolate milk at home? Some of you. How do you make? You add make milk, add some chocolate syrup, isn't it? How many of you bought chocolate milk from store? So when you drink from the store, it's more thickened or viscous. Why it is thickened? Because they add some gum or starch, so that way the starch can bind with it. As a result, it has greater viscosity. Make sense? So primarily, it enhances the drinking experience. Another example is, how many of you heard about leavening agent? I, I, I bought one example like, do you remember good old volcano experience? So for example, you have baking soda here. I have vinegar. I added some orange color, don't get me wrong. There is no orange vinegar. What happened when you add vinegar to this baking powder? What happened? You don't know? Okay, I hope. Did you see it's forming? So that forming is called leavening. So leavening means it's called the rising agent. Uh, it's primarily very, very useful in baking industry. So that's why when you have a sandwich, some of the bread are very smooth and soft consistency. They add a leavening agent. Example will be baking soda. Sweetness, there are different types of sweetness you can say. For example, how many of you heard about zero calorie sweetness, artificial sweetness? How many of you tried stevia? Anyone tried stevia? So stevia is a natural one. Whereas regular sugar, it has calorie. Zero calorie, it has zero sugar or zero amount of calorie. So that's another example for a uh, food additive. And the third one is the color. For example, so this one is a color additive. 
So you can have a lot of different color approved. Uh, for example, if you like M&M candy, oh, those are very bright color. Kids love those colors. So and companies add different colors. So anything that is not naturally present, it's a color additive. For example, if you buy a jello that has a red color, even though jello is a natural product, if you're adding color, it's artificial. So there are a lot of different uh, approved colors. So take a guess, what does FDC stand for? F for food, D for drug, and C for cosmetics. So let's say if we have a lipstick or foundation, so there are different colors approved by uh, different agencies. So you can add only approved colors. So that's why if you ever see FDC red number, those are approved for a specific function. And finally, the nutritional health aspect. That's why when you eat or when you eat breakfast cereal, they have a ton of vitamins. Why on the earth they add a lot of vitamins? So during that process, if you make the corn or rice, a lot of vitamins are lost. So in order to supplement, they add a lot of vitamins. How many of you seen this modern girl with the umbrella? So what does it mean? We'll talk in a minute, but you may see that iodized salt, why they add iodine. So iodine, it's required for the hormone or the glands. The gland is present here, that thyroid gland. Especially people living in mountain area or hilly area, they might be lacking iodine. So that's why some of the salt are iodized. So that way it has some health implication. And finally, irradiation. So irradiated food is primarily used for space mission, like NASA, Army people, because irradiation is one of the best way to make sure no pathogen is present, no bad bacteria is present. Especially if they're going to space, they don't want to hear like there's a food poisoning. Uh, it's not at all fun. Mm -hmm. And irradiation actually started by uh, defense. They want to make sure the food is safe, but it has a lot of implication. So if the food is irradiated, it should have this logo that's called the redura. So a lot of spices we get in the market, some of them are irradiated. And also some of the potatoes and onions are some companies, they are irradiated, okay. So coming back, why this, there is a girl and rain, it's basically when it pour, when it rain, it pours. What does it mean is, so years back, when you have salt or sugar, when you keep for a long time, it become clump. This company, basically, they add an anti-caking agent, it's called the calcium silicate. So this anti-caking agent, you can see in some of the cheese, actually. Some of the cheese, so that's why it's not clumped. It's basically a grated cheese, okay? Coming back, some of the bread or some of the food items you buy from the store, they often write, Art, no preservative, no artificial. I don't understand why they're still adding no artificial preservative. If you look at the ingredient list, they have still a lot of ingredients. So a lot of companies does for a marketing. So years back, you can look at the lot of ingredients were on the list, but nowadays, uh, this is the one I bought, bought from farmer's market. You may see a very, very less amount because uh, that's a change happening in the industry because a lot of people, uh, they want to have a clean labeling and also people want to understand what is added in the food.